I don't know how many different colors of tungsten there are, but there's a lot of them. And it can be kind of confusing, especially for a beginner. In this video, I tested five different colors. It's not an extensive test. It's a down and dirty test. Let's hit it. There's a lot more different colors than this, but these are the most popular. So it's red, gray, purple, chartreuse, and blue. I used a tungsten grinder so that all the points would be the same starting out. All these are going to weld similar on DC. What I'm interested in is how they'll do on AC at 200 amps. First up is the thoriated, which is red. I've welded a lot of aluminum with 2% thoriated, but you do have to prep the tip correctly. Or you can get nodules on the tip. Next up is gray. Again, at 200 amps, we're going to pump it up to 200 amps and then take a look at how the tip misshaped or how it held up. Looks like it held up pretty well. Next is E3 purple, same scenario. Next up is the CK laser, which seemed to weld exactly the same as the E3. Lastly, 2% lanthanated blue. Now let's take a look at all those tips. One of these does not look like the other, but the other four, barely rounded, maintain their shape at 200 amps on AC. I think we can all agree from that little down and dirty test is the 2% thoriated got those little nodules on the tip and sometimes those things can spit into the puddle or create an erratic arc. If you're getting started TIG welding, any of those other four will do you fine. You won't even know the difference until you get a little seat time under your belt. Let's take a look at some tips for sharpening electrodes. I'm not one to try to talk people into buying a tungsten grinder especially not at first. You can get by just fine with an angle grinder and a drill motor or just doing them by hand like this. Just make sure to get the scratches running lengthwise. Super important. All that said, tungsten grinders are awesome and you may want to think about one down the road eventually. And one thing they definitely do is remove one variable when things start going wrong. You'll know it's not your tip. But there are a lot of ways you can sharpen a tungsten just to get started. One other way is using a belt sander or a drum sander. There are a lot of best practices that you'll read about, about using a dedicated diamond wheel or at least a dedicated wheel. And all those make a little bit of difference, but what makes the most difference is which direction you put your scratches. Here's an up-close view of scratches running sideways, and they're also a little bit rough. You'd like to be able to pinpoint your arc and have it light off exactly where you want it. This is at in slow motion. You can see this is not going to help you if you're right next to a cooling fin or something like that. You can avoid all this just by having all the grinding scratches running lengthwise. If you're not opposed to putting a little slot in your grinder guard, this can make a real easy way of sharpening electrodes. And you could even buy a diamond wheel and put on your grinder and use it like this. It helps you get a fairly consistent grind. A cordless drill run at low speed can help you get a, a really consistent grind. That was a really coarse hard rock, so it's not a really smooth grind, but all the scratches are running lengthwise. So let's get an up close view of this arc start here, and let's see what happens. That's about as crisp as you can get. No wandering at all. Let's do the same tip now with AC at 200 amps and see if we get any arc wandering there. I'm setting the amperage to 200 amps. I'm going full pedal. And the AC balance, I'm going to set to 32% cleaning, which is a pretty good all-around setting. Okay, we're set on AC with a 332, 2% lanthanated electrode. There's the arc start, nice and crisp. Let's ramp it up to 200 amps. And let's see how much it rounded that tip. This is one of the reasons that I really like 2% lanthanated, because it holds up well under high amperage. I generally prep my tips for aluminum the same as I do for thick high amperage steel with a fairly blunt tip like I did to begin with, just like this. The pointed tip gives me a crisp arc start and up to around 200 amps like I'm welding right here. It holds up really well. It doesn't misshape typically. Every now and then it will of course depending on what frequency you're using and things like that. But generally speaking the tip holds up really well for me and for steel a blunt tip like this can really help get more penetration and also can actually help narrow the bead. Any of the electrodes I tested today would be fine for a joint like this on carbon steel, but not all of them are good all-purpose electrodes. The 2% thoriated is not that great of an all-purpose electrode. 
One other thing to think about on types of electrodes is how well they operate at really low amperages, and the 2% lanthanated does really well there, as do all of them on DC. These box cutter blades probably only took about 15 amps. If you've been watching this channel a while, you know I personally prefer 2% lanthanated for everything. It just keeps life simple. It's not the best for every scenario. It's just what I use for what I do. Hey, listen, my online store is at wellmonger.com. That's how I pay for these videos. We have tungsten, we have filler metal, we have gloves, we have TIG fingers. Links in the description or just go to weldmonger.com.